morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's a blessing to be here one more day. Amen. We come to praise him, thank him yes. for his enormous blessings. Yes. I'm going to read to you. speak against the wicked, and thy enemies take thy name in vain. Do not, I hate them, O Lord, I hate thee. I am not, I grieve with those that rise up against thee. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. May the Lord have a blessing to read us here and do it of his own grace. Heavenly Father, we come this morning, this second Sunday in August. Yes. Father, we, we want to thank you for last week, Father, because yes. we had a great time, Father. Yes, sir. We went three nights, Father. And we really enjoyed it, Heavenly Father. Yeah. We want to thank you for everybody that came out, Heavenly Father. Yeah. We want to thank you for all the pastors that came out, Heavenly yeah. Father. We want to thank you for this day, Father. Yeah. Because we could have been somewhere else, Father. Yeah. But we're here in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We want to thank you for it, Father. Yeah. We want to thank you for everything that you've done for us, Father, from the food that we ate yesterday yeah. until this morning. Yeah. 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 We want to thank you for everything that's going on Heavenly Father. Yeah. Sometimes, Father, it gets bad when we have wars and hatred in the world, Father, but yeah. you know what's going on, Father. Yeah. Yeah. You control everything, Father. Yeah. Yeah. You control everything that's going on in the world, Heavenly yeah. Father, and you know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we have hatred that's within people in the United States, Father, yeah. Yeah. but you know what's happening, Father. Yeah. Yes. You got control of everything, Father. Yes. Yes. We want to thank you, Father, for everything that you do for us, Father. Yes. We got up this morning, Father, and we put on our clothes and we came out to the house of the Lord. Yes. Yes. We want to thank you for that, Father. Yes. We want to thank you for everything yes. that you can do, Father, yes. because we need everything that you've handed yes. us in yes. every way. Yes. And, Father, we want to thank you, Father. Thank you. We want your praise every day, Father. Yes. And it's in your name, Heavenly Father, yes. that we pray. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise Him.
about homecoming and revival service to be held at Young Chapel CME Church. Homecoming, August 14, 2022. Revival service, August 15 through 17, 2022. Evangelist for Monday night, presiding Elder Elma T. Jones. Tuesday night, Reverend Jesse F. Emanuel. Wednesday night, Reverend Dr. Earl Griffin Sr. And on Tuesday night, August 16th, Mount Pleasant is one of the invited churches to the Mount Pleasant Church family with special thanks. May the Lord reward you for all you have done, group 2 and 12. Your thoughtfulness has been a real blessing. Thank you, Ella Wade. And here, I'm going to ask Minister LeJane to stand and everyone join in with me and wishing him a happy birthday today. <laughs>
Let us pray, God, how we love you. We thank you. Master, we praise you for being so good to us. Thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and all that you're getting ready to do. God, I pray that you would speak in this house. Have your way now. Thank you for your traveling grace today. I pray now that you would forgive me for all I've done, said of all of this against your will. Master, I need your strength now. Pour out your spirit upon me now. Grant preaching power in this place. Open hearts, minds, and ears, of oh God, as we get into your word. Let your word do what it sets out to do. Help better correct change and convict your people. For Master, we want to leave this place better than when we came. Touch those who are watching even now, wherever they are. I pray that their life will be made the better after this worship experience has ended. God, I pray as I always do is that you save the lost at any cost. Do it however you want to do it in this house. We just want to give you glory. Nevertheless, let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now can we thank God for his presence in this place. sharing in this house on this Lord's Day. Let me publicly thank all of you for traveling with us on Friday night to the St. Paul Church. I walked out and saw all y'all there and uh, my heart was just made glad because of that. It's always an exciting moment when your church family can travel with their pastor. Amen. Amen. Let me thank you also for this past week. What an amazing experience we had those three nights of revival. Amen. You guys really outdid yourselves. I know that in this uh, area, every year for the month of August, some church, some neighboring church is having homecoming on today. As a matter of fact, every Sunday in the month of August. So I promise you, uh, if you pray for me, uh, I told Sister Doris in the office all this preaching we've had this week. Uh, I'll just give my least a speech and uh, we'll go on to the house. But look with me to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, to the office of this church to the deaconess, to all of you who are sharing, to my wife and daughter who are sharing in this place. Thank God for your presence. First Peter chapter 5. I want to read one verse in your hearing. Verse number 7. First Peter chapter 5. Verse number 7. get there you'll find these words recorded casting all your care upon him for he careth for you amen, amen. I want to tag this text with this subject this has to get off me this has to get off of me uh, for those of us who are familiar with this text and I just read it in your hearing we recognize that the worship of our God is both personal and public. What you do when you enter into this house as it relates to public worship is a matter, is a personal matter. And if it's not personal to you, then you're really missing out on what it really means to worship God. It's not just some group effort. It's a personal matter. Tell somebody this is personal. When you hear people say, I've come to bless his name, that's because they've come to bless his name. But then not only is it the matter personal, but then it's a matter that's public. 
And because it, it's public, it tends to lend itself to personal scrutiny of nosy people like some who are here and watching right now. Even those people who are worshiping, and because the truth of the matter is, they're not really worshiping us, but there are times that we've got to be reminded that we're not supposed to sit up and watch other people praise God, but we should also be praising God and make sure that we're doing what we are supposed to be doing toward God. Yet time after time we find ourselves gazing at other worshipers like they're here for us. Listen, their hand claps are not for us. Their adoration is not for us. They are for the God who is superlative in his deity, who's splendorous in his majesty, and who's perfect in his decision making. He is God, people of God. So when we come to worship him, there ought to be a feeling of some saying around us, listen, move, because I've come to let him know just how much he means to me. But we can grab us just yet because we're nosy. Yeah. And we want to see what others are doing. Every Sunday we act as if we are spectators at a ball game. Uh, we're peering, peeping, and perusing the confines of the people in the pews trying to see what's going on. And people of God, I saw something one time because I was doing the same thing at one point. And Mama Nanny messed me up. I was sitting in church this particular Sunday a long time ago, and there was this woman, and I always knew she would shout in church, but this particular night, she was doing some things when she was shouting that blew my mind. Church got real good, and people were praising God and shouting all over the place. And I noticed that she began to throw her hands up in the air. And begin to just shake things down. And, and she kept on doing that and just shaking it down. I never saw her do that before. And so after church, she was talking to another lady. And sometimes I get a little nosy when people are talking. And so I decided to pay attention to what they were saying. And the lady began to testify, talking about how good church was. And she said, you know, I'm going through so much right now. I'm overwhelmed with everything that's going on. I'm dealing with so much. And sometimes I feel like I'm going under. And she said, that's why I had to make my way to church tonight. She said, I didn't come to play church tonight. And I had to find some way to get all of this stuff. Me. She said, so if you notice, that's why I kept throwing my hands up like this. And I kept dropping my hand down. She said, I kept doing that because it was like I had to give all of that load over to God and just let it off of me. And people of God, every now and then, you got to take everything that you're dealing with, everything that you find yourself going through, and load it up to and just shake it off. Tell somebody there are some things you gotta shake off. But can I tell you that's not just for her. But one out of three of us who are here right now ought to be the same way and tell the devil I've gotta get this off of me. And people of God, it's in First Peter. It's one of the most magnificent letters ever written in the Bible. It's written by that disciple Simon Peter who makes up the concentric circle of inner disciplehood of Peter, James, and John. Okay. He's the one people of God who will cuss if you make him angry. Right. And he's the one who will cut you if you get too close. Right. 
And for those of you who are uncomfortable about that, can I tell you, it's because you haven't matured just yet in the faith. You, you still think that Christians are Jesus Juniors, but here's the real truth of the matter. There's still some old you in the new you. And can I tell you, it doesn't take but the right set of circumstances to let everybody see just the tag of the old you. Can I be honest and tell you, don't you just love a Christian that still got some rough edges? It's Peter, and as he writes, he makes it clear that as a Christian, you, should, you will suffer from time to time. Now listen to me carefully. Just because you're suffering doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. It could be that God can trust you with what you're going through. And you've done something right. Can I tell you, you've got to learn even now as believers that you will cry sometime. And Peter writes in chapter 1 verse 5 that we are kept by the power of God. And I wish I had some people with a little gray hat to help me right through here. Who knows that you've been kept by God your whole life. Listen, I don't have to ask them if God has kept you or can he keep you. They'll just shout, he's been keeping me my whole life. But in chapter 2 verse 9, it makes it clear that we are strange people by nature. We are royal priesthood in chapter 3. He says that you got to make sure that the Holy Ghost is involved in your relationships. In chapter 4, verse 12, he says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which ought to try you as though some strange thing has happened to you. In other words, he says that when trouble finds your address, don't act like it won't find it again. He said, because the truth of the matter is, this ain't the first time you've had trouble, and it won't be the last time. But then by the time you get to chapter 5, he admonishes both the shepherd of the church and the sheep on the flock to take care of each other. Check this out. He says to the preacher, don't be so greedy for money that you leave your parishioners broke while you drive nice. Oh, that's good, but check this out. Something is wrong if a pastor prospers and the people does not. Y'all quiet in here. Check this out. But something is also wrong when the preacher pulls up in a raggedy car that's leaking oil and you sitting up driving nice. Can I tell you, if you've been blessed, you ought to bless him. Preach in here. Y'all quiet. Check this out. He says, if you got a good pastor, you ought to take care of him. But watch this. He says, and by the way, if you're trying to get to the top, the way to get to the top in the kingdom is you've got to learn how to crawl down to the bottom. But here is what Peter says in verse 6. He says, humble yourself. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And I wish I had some people in here who's watching who've seen God exalt you. But wait, he then says, the devil is a roaring lion. And Mama Moss, I like that because he's not a lion. He says he is as a roaring lion. And can I tell you why that is? Because there's really only one lion. And he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is David's seed. He's the one who's the Messiah. So the devil goes forth as a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. But can I give you the antidote for worry, stress, and anxiety and stuff that happens in your life? Here's what the Bible says. Casting all of your care upon him, for he careth for you. Can I tell you this? 
You cannot worship God if your body is here with me and your mind is on the other side of town. So since we are here and we've been going through all of these sicknesses, death, diseases, low wages, high gas prices, jacked up economy, listen, you need to get all of this stuff off of you. And here's the real truth. Most of us worry too much and worship too little. And to make things worse, some of the stuff you worried about is just crazy. I mean, what sense, Sister Charlotte, does it make to worry about your child? I mean, I understand that they're 4 or 5 or 11 or 16, but that joker that's over 30. They ought to be worried about you by not something is wrong with that. Why sit up and worry about your health when the truth of the matter is God has sustained your health the whole time. Some of you living with some stuff that has killed other people and yet you continue to wake up just as fat as you can be. Listen here. Don't come in here and tell me God ain't good. I need to drop this on you. I promise I won't but the devil is sneaky. And he comes in under the radar. And will have you sit through a service and never clap your hands, never lift your hands. Can I tell you why? It's hard to lift your hand when you're loaded with worry and anxiety. But I've come to declare healing for everybody that's in here and those who are watching because I believe that if that woman can get that stuff off of her, then you ought to be able to get it off of you. So can I ask, is there anybody here or watching that's got some stuff you can't fix, some problems you can't solve, some issues you can't deal with, some circumstances that are chaotic? I need for some people that are being with me. I need some people who's dealing with some stuff that you can't even fix yourself to help me preach until I feel a little bit better and tell somebody I'm getting well today because I'm going to get some stuff off of me. I'm going to let go and let God. I'm going to turn this over to Jesus. Listen, I've got some stuff going on in my life that I'm really some stuff out. Tell somebody I feel like I even now. Okay, let's make the devil mad. You ought to lift both your hands and just shake them and say, I'm getting this off of me right now because it makes no sense to have a big bed and can't sleep at night. It makes no sense to have food but don't have an appetite. It makes no sense to be in church and worry. And I tell you, it makes no sense. But I hate to ask it. Well, brass, how do we do it biblically? How can I get this off of me? Watch this. First of all, you got to make a commitment that's personal. Tell somebody to make a commitment that's personal. Okay, let me ask this. Uh, what sense, Deacon Bernard, does it make to have a God that says he's a heavy load share and not share your load with him? Uh, what sense does it make for you to lie to yourself and say, I got this, when the truth of the matter is you can't even wake yourself up in the morning? Y'all not sure. Watch this. What sense does it make to have a God who can carry you and your load and you not give your load to the one that's been carrying it the whole time? Listen, the devil has tricked so many of us because he's made us believe 
that if you don't carry the load for your family, All right. nobody else is going to do it. Can I tell you this? Yes, sir. Fool around and die. Right. They're going to cast an insurance policy in yes, and go right on. At the end of the day, the way that we ought to deal with worry, anxiety, and stress, and things that are beyond our grasp is to do exactly what Peter offers. And can I show you? He says, casting on. Oh. Check this out. The word here for casting in the Greek is eporipto. It's in the present tense, active voice, and the indicative mood, which translates like this. Either cast all of it or keep it to yourself. Check this out. Here's how it works. God doesn't take worry down payments. God doesn't take an anxiety deposit. Either you give God all of your worry or God will let you keep it. Watch this. Do you know that God in his own sovereign love for us will let us try to carry our own load? Oh God, watch this. People often, this this often, God won't, we hear people say, God won't put any more on you than you can bear. That's a lie. God intentionally overloads us all the time. So we'll have enough sense to get down on our knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. God will let you go right on and try to carry your own load. Okay, wait, I need for some people who's trying to carry your load all by yourself. Only for you to discover that it was just to heaven. Now watch this. This is where God allows you to try to carry your own load. Only for you to realize that it's too much, it's too heavy, you can't do it, and it's killing you. Okay, I got to be honest. There are some people in here right now. And you're listening to me. And your load is killing you. That's why people say you, you're so mean and grouchy. Listen, you're really not mean and grouchy. Your load is just killing you. It's hard for you. But let me go ahead and give you a liberating word right now. If you let God have your load... Okay, wait. Let, let, let me show you something else. The word casting here, eporipto, it comes from Greek culinary ovens where they bake bread. It means to touch something that's hot and to let it go. Okay, I see y'all still don't have it. Uh, so check this out. I, I don't do much cooking at all. But what I do know is I, I did buy me a hot Rod iron skillet. And and one particular day, I caught myself frying some fish, right? And and I fooled around and I put it in that skillet and I touched it without putting something in my over my hand before I grabbed it. Now listen, I didn't have a towel or anything else. But watch this. I didn't need anybody to tell me to let it go. I didn't need dropping it 101 or dropping it 202. Listen, I didn't need any advanced killing dropping lessons in order for me to get my hands off of it. I just let it go. And people of God, whenever you run across a problem that's too hot for you to handle, listen to here, you ought to just drop it. When you've done all that you know how to do, and you pray about it, and you've done all of that, listen to here, there comes a time you got to just let some stuff go. Okay, wait, I feel something in my spirit. You ought to tell somebody, I'm dropping some people today. I'm dropping some problems today. I'm dropping some situations today. When you help me preach until I feel a little bit better, I tell somebody, drop it, drop it, drop it. Let me say, drop it like it's hot. Because watch this. If it's too hot for you to handle, then 
said, let it go. Yeah. Tell somebody, let it go. Let it go. Can I go a little deep? Go Listen to this. There are times that you can carry a load that's so heavy that you can barely stand. But when you finally let go of that load, can I tell you, it's going to change your whole life. It's going to make you feel better. So let me go a little deeper. We're living in a culture where people don't know what real church is like. See, in the old church, people came to church with burdens all the time. But they shouted and released it. Nowadays, when we come to church, we got burdens on our shoulder. So now you put on a new weed, new weed, you're popping pills, you're smoking weed, you're drinking. But all you got to do is open up your mouth and release that thing. It's going to be better for you and everybody around you. So can we practice real quick? If you got a burden that's too heavy, a problem that's too big, a valley that's too a sickness that's too devastating, a situation that you can't handle, I dare you to leap to your doggone feet real quick and lift up your hands and tell the Lord, I gotta get this off of me and open up your mouth right where you are and let it go and let God handle it because you can't watch this, do it by yourself. Not only must you make a commitment that's personal, casting all, oh. but then secondly, watch this. You've got to make a choice that's practical. Mm -hmm. Tell somebody to make a choice sure. that's practical. <clears throat> Check this out. Peter says, casting all your care. Mm -hmm. Meronio, mm -hmm. stress, worry, anxiety. Mm -hmm. Watch this upon him. Uh -huh. Okay, you missed it, so let me all say it right. again. Mm -hmm. all right. Casting all your care, yeah. meronial, yeah. worry, anxiety, distress, situation, circumstances that's beyond your control. Yeah. Watch this upon him. All right. yeah. Cast them on him. Yeah. You still don't have yeah. Yeah. That's why Peter didn't tell us who him is. Watch this. Isn't this a good place for Peter to let us know who the him is? Why doesn't Peter just announce pronouns and articulate to us who the him is that he's talking about? Okay, here's why. Because whenever a Jewish man is teaching in an almost holy Jewish audience, he uses the philosophical form of exegesis called remes, and it means the secret. Tell somebody the secret. And the reason why he does it is because if he has to tell them who he's talking about, then he's not talking to them. Y'all missed it. I've discovered that there are some people in every church setting who does not know who him is. And I know that's bad English, but it's good theology. But when you know him, and you love him, and you trust him, and when you wake up in the morning with your mind stayed on him, then the people that don't know him start looking at the people who do know him, looking at them like, why are you standing on your feet? Why are you waving your hands? Why are you making all that noise? And you ought to just look back at him and say, if you knew him like I know him, you would act like I act because of him. And the reason why you don't act like I act is because you don't know him like I know him. I know him to be a company keeper. I know him to be a doctor in a sick room. I know him to be a lawyer when I'm guilty. I know him to be money in my hand when I don't have a dime in my pocket. As a matter of fact, you ought to look at somebody and ask them, have you ever met him? Okay, this is going to be bad English, but just tell somebody, him is my all in all. And I tell you, him won't be 
me up this morning. He ever started me on my way. He ever puts bread on my table. He ever puts breath in my body. He ever takes care of me every day. Is there anybody here I'm watching who just loves him? Can I ask? Is there anybody here I'm watching that has ever tried here? Do you know it? I must admit and tell somebody I cannot make it without him. Because it's in him that I live, I move, and have my being. I heard the Bible say, now unto him that's able to keep me from falling. Can I tell you, him will take care of you. But I gotta tell you this, him has a name. And the name is above every name. Can I tell you, him has a name that makes everything better. The truth of the matter is, I've called him in the
are you going to keep it all to yourself? All right. If you're tired of being loaded down, if you're tired of being weighed down, yes, sir. God says, give it all yes, sir. to me. But then not only must you make a commitment that's personal, but you've got to make a choice that's practical. Casting all your care upon him. You've got to decide either I'm going to keep carrying it and killing myself or I'm going to give it to him. God is saying to you right now, I know how it looks. I know how you feel. But if I didn't trust you with this problem, if I didn't trust you with the circumstance, the difficulty, you wouldn't be going through it. Can I say this? If God didn't equip you for where you are now, listen, you wouldn't be going through what you're experiencing now. Everything from your past, it helps build your character. It helps build your faith, your strength. For the moment you're in right yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. That's why I can say with boldness. Ah, yes. oh, yes. I thank God. Thank God. For every trial, every yes. test, yes. every difficulty, yes. every hardship. Yes, yes. Because watch this. Oh, thank you, Lord. It allowed me yes, sir. Oh, yes. to handle oh, yes. where oh, I am. But I've got to do what Peter said. Yes. I've got to cast it all oh. Oh. to him. Yes. I know you like to keep some of it for oh. yourself. But listen, thank you. the longer you hold on to oh, it, thank you, thank you, thank you. the longer you'll stay in it. Oh, yes. thank you, Lord. If you're ready to come out of it, Give it all to him. Yes. If you're here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you haven't made Jesus your choice. Oh, yes. And you're watching. And you want to accept Christ in your life. Oh, yes. The Bible said, Thou confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. Believe in thine heart that Christ was raised from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Oh, yes. Come to him.
last gift in your hand. As we make ready to partake of the Lord's Supper.
Then they went out to the Mount of Olives, singing a hymn. I know it was the blood. Y'all have a great day.